Welcome back to the Lynx 3.0 tutorial series. I'm Ken Sharp with LabVIEW Maker Hub, and in this tutorial we'll be discussing Data Dashboard. Data Dashboard is a free mobile application that National Instruments created to allow you to quickly and easily create a mobile interface to LabVIEW applications that you might have running on a BeagleBone Black or Raspberry Pi. This application is available for Apple devices and for Android devices and is a free download from their respective app stores. So in this tutorial, I'll be using the application from my previous tutorial on LabVIEW Web Services to demonstrate this. The only thing I changed about that application is I changed the output type of all of my web services to the XML format. That's the format that the Data Dashboard app expects. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to launch the Data Dashboard application. I am running this on an Android tablet. It's important to note that this application only works on tablets. So if you're trying to run this on an Android or iOS phone, it won't work. Okay, so we start off here and there's a series of tutorials and these are useful tutorials and I recommend that you go through them if you're just getting started with Data Dashboard. For now, we're gonna skip past them and we're gonna create a new Data Dashboard panel by clicking on the plus icon in the upper right corner. Okay, so that launches us into a new blank screen so let's look around quickly. So if you click on the icon in the upper right that looks like a graph with a slider underneath it, you'll see that it opens a palette. And this is similar to the palette that you might see in LabVIEW. And if we click on some of them, like indicators, you can see there's quite a few um, different types of indicators that we can use. If I click on controls, there's a number of controls available. Um, and likewise, through the palette, now we're gonna be focusing on the palette called LabVIEW Web Services. Let's click on that now. So there are two items under this list. We're gonna be using both of those today. So let's start off with the call web service. So I'm gonna click on that or touch that and then touch an empty space on my front panel. And now I'm gonna click anywhere in empty space to get rid of that palette. Next, we'll select the call button there by touching it. And then I'm going to click on the icon that looks like a globe. Okay, so that pops up a new dialog. So this dialog will allow us to type in a host name or IP address. Um, in this case, I'm going to type in the IP address of my BeagleBone Black that is running my application. I'm going to click over on the port and I'm going to type in the same web service port number that we used um, when we were testing our web services in a web browser. That's 8001 in my case. When I've typed that all in, I'm going to tap on the connect button. So this just connected to my BeagleBone Black and it's showing me what web services I have available on the BeagleBone Black. In this case, it's just one the WS web service that we're familiar with from the previous tutorial. And I see that I have my two web services available. So for this item, I'm going to click on the LED. So now you can see that there is um, an icon to the left of the call button and it has the name value. And that's actually what the control was called on my LED web service. So if I had more than one, there would be more than one um, icon to the left. Also outputs would be shown on the right side of the call, but in this case, my LED web service only has one input and no outputs. So let's go ahead and tap on the plus icon there. And so you'll notice it comes up with a button that says create new control. 
let's go ahead and touch that. So now I get a small palette that opens and it's limited to the controls that are compatible with that data type. In this case, the data type is a Boolean. So the only thing available to me is a switch. So let's select that. And then I'll again click on any empty space on my panel. And you'll notice that now it shows that the value input to my web service is connected to the switch that I just dropped. So now I'm going to touch any open empty space. OK, so now let's go ahead and test that. So we can test that by running this front panel. So that's done by clicking on the play icon in the upper right corner. So let's go ahead and click on that. So now that's running. Let's see, I'm going to flip the switch and then the web service is only accessed when I hit the call button. So this is the difference between the call and the poll uh, method that we'll explore next. So I'm gonna go ahead and tap the call button and you'll notice that the LED turned on. So let's go ahead and turn my switch back off and I'll hit call once again and it turns the LED off. That's perfect. Okay, so now let's stop my dashboard. Um, we can do that by um, hitting the um, octagon with the line through it in the upper right corner. That's the stop button. So now we're stopped and we're back in edit mode in data dashboard. So next, let's add, again, let's click on the graph icon that opens the palette. Click on LabVIEW Web Services. And now let's try out the poll web service. So I'll select that and then click on any empty space on my panel. And then I'll click in some empty space to close the palette. So this poll uh, web service item, the way it works is you can set this up to pull a web service at a configurable rate. So this will we're going to use this to access the temperature web service. So let's go ahead and click on the globe icon again for the poll item. And again, we get the same dialog here for uh, to configure a web service. So I'm going to once again enter the IP address of my BeagleBone Black. And then I'll click over in the port field and enter my port number, which is 8001. And then I'll click the connect button. Okay, so again, it's showing me the web service that we have available. And it's only gonna show me web services that are unbound, so that are still available that I don't have a control connected to currently. So the LED one is already connected to the call web service button. So I don't see that listed. If you ever get to this dialog and you don't see a web service that you think should be, should be there, um, it's probably one of two problems. Number one, your, the output type of the web service may be set to something other than XML. Um, so you can go change that to XML and then it should appear. If it still doesn't appear, um, sometimes that will happen if you've added or removed web services and you've clicked on the um, IP address, like you, the, the pre-configured list of um, frequently used IP addresses. So if that happens, um, go ahead and try and type in the IP or hostname address again from the keyboard and that will refresh that list of web services. But that's only if you are missing a web service that you think should be there. Okay, so in our case, the temperature web service is there and available. So let's click on that. Okay, so you'll notice um, we see a temperature item. So again, that's the indicator that was on our web service. It's, it was named temperature. And it's appearing to the right of the poll um, icon. And so that tells, me, tells us that that is an output of the web service. So let's go ahead and click on the plus icon there next to temperature. And again, we get a create new indicator button. So let's tap that. And we get a palette here that has controls that are compatible with the data type of that temperature output. So in this case, um, let's get a gauge. Um, it sounds like, a, like something useful for this. So I'm going to select gauge, and then I'm going to tap on any empty space on the, di on the diagram. And so now we can see that the temperature output is linked to the gauge indicator that we just dropped.
Okay, so now let's do a couple of things to make this more useful. So let's just tap in some empty space to deselect. And then I'm going to select the poll um, item, the poll web service item again. And now I'm going to click on the gear icon in the upper right corner. What this does is it opens the property dialog. So we're going to click on web service. And here you can see the poll rate. We can configure this. So by default, it's set to one second. We can change that for anything from a third of a second up to 10 seconds. Um, for, for now, one second seems fine to me. So I'm going to touch the back arrow here. And then I'm going to just click on some empty space to get rid of that properties dialog. Next, I'm going to select the gauge by tapping it. And then let's hit that gear icon again. I want to change this so that the range that it's displaying is no longer 0 to 10 because I know my temperature range is going to be in the range of, say, between 70 and 90 degrees. So 0 to 10 isn't going to show me anything. So let's see if we can change that with the gear icon. So tap the gear. And one of the fields that we see here, amongst others, is data range. So let's tap on data range. And then let's tap on minimum. Now the keyboard comes up and we can change this to any number we want. So I'm going to change this to um, 75 as a minimum. And then let's tap on the maximum. And I'll type in um, 95. And then I'll click the check mark there to enter that. Then I'll hit the back button. And now I can see my data range is 75 to 95. So now let's tap on some empty space to get rid of the properties dialog. And now you can see the range on the gauge has changed. Okay, so I think everything is configured correctly here. Let's go ahead and hit the run button in the upper right corner. Okay. So great, now we can see that about once a second, our gauge is changing values. And let me just heat that temperature sensor up a little bit. There we go. Now we can see the temperature jumping up. All right, cool. So it seems to actually be responding to stimuli. Now let's just make sure that our LED is still working. Great, let's change that switch back and still works. All right, great. So there's my data dashboard for my LabVIEW application running on my BeagleBone Black. Make sure to check out labviewmakerhub.com for more tutorials and projects, and ask any questions you have on the MakerHub forums at labviewmakerhub.com forums.